so Patty, thanks for sitting down to talk a little bit about the new Infinity Rehab Vision. Um, I don't know how you felt about it whenever you kind of saw it in its final final version. I, I think being part of it at strategic planning and, and the work, the pre-work and uh, going into that, it was, it, it, I don't know, it's a powerful statement to me. How do you feel about oh, it? Oh yeah, I just, when I look at it, I'm like, this is so cool. You know, I love like the first, the revolution. Yeah. Because I feel like that's what we really are trying to do here. Yeah. We really are trying to do something in a whole new way. and um, and and are really kind of trying to be brave enough to lead that revolution. So I love that very beginning kind of catch, catch you kind of word. Yeah, yeah. I think um, my word that jumps out most is the irresistible culture piece. I think that that is, uh, if I think about where I hope the, the kind of, um, the, the nature of infinity or the, or the reputation of infinity to be whenever uh, we've got people thinking about working here or wanting to work here or not ever wanting to leave here. Um, irresistible is the word that, that I don't think it could be described any better. Yeah. And honestly. Yeah, I agree. And I think that with that, it's like if you come into this culture and it sticks, it will be irresistible to you. Right. And, and if you don't want to be a part of the things that we want to be a part of, mm -hmm. then it, it just won't be a good match. And I think by having such a clear vision, we're going to find the right people to help us get there. Yeah, I, I think the irresistible culture isn't going to just come because we said so, right? right? right. It, it comes from uh, that second sentence the, to inspiring uh, the, the individuals growing as leaders, clinicians, innovators. Um, imagine working in an environment like that every day, right? right? Where, where you are actually challenged to uh, be in a clinical leadership role where uh, every frontline clinician, I say this a lot, every frontline clinician is a leader. They, they're a manager also and yeah. a clinician. Yeah. Um, and and to, to be hitting that and, and having it in the culture, that I think is going to be what delivers that culture. Yeah. And you know, we're going to need those people for like that next piece up at the beginning about relentless yeah. and unparalleled quality. I mean, the, the idea of just continuing to keep pushing the envelope of understanding what are the best ways to help our patients mm -hmm. achieve their maximum potential. And as soon as we kind of get one piece of that figured out, how do we push that to the next level so right. that we can understand it even further and even deeper? So so that kind of, we're gonna need people like that yeah. in order to achieve that type of a change and to really stay fully engaged in that ongoing pursuit of quality. As, you, as you're talking I'm wondering about as you think about 2017 and, and taking this vision now that's kind of it's written it's it's been vetted you know leaders from all levels of the company have have put input into this and I, f I feel like the consensus is a, is a pretty powerful statement um, when you think about where your work is going in 2017 around quality and outcomes um, how do you see your work kind of embodying the vision in the next year? Right. Well, and I think that the, the things that we're looking at on the quality side for some of our clinical initiatives really has to do with saying, okay, what's in the external evidence? Mm -hmm. How does that need to be applied, that really that knowledge translation piece? How do we make that work in our environment? Testing those things on a small scale and then expanding them bit mm -hmm. by bit by bit by bit. And, um, and, and, I, and what we're trying to look at are those interventions that are really going to that quality and value piece. Where so, so kind of thinking about there's a lot that we do in rehabilitation that is probably helpful to patients, but what's the most helpful? Right. And, and trying to get really, when we deliver care, focused on those elements that have the strongest evidence and that are going to have kind of the biggest bang for the buck in helping our patients reach their maximum potential. Yeah. So I think that that's the, the piece of the, the kind of pursuing that quality. I think the other piece of this is that isn't necessarily as explicit in, in the um, vision but will be needed to achieve the vision is really trying to go deeper and deeper with our use of data to help us make those decisions too. Right. So that we're not just kind of shooting from the hip trying to figure things out, but we're trying to have more informed decisions. So I think that is really exciting too. Yeah, that's super exciting. As I as I kind of think about it in terms of my the, the initiatives we're doing around people in 2017, uh, I come back to that employee experience uh, trying, you know, we've we've had a professional development, focused professional development effort for about three and a half years now. Uh, it's kind of, it, I don't know, it kind of feels like it's hitting its stride uh, a little bit between 
um, people knowing what, what we're trying to do and also um, me feeling like we've, we've got a pathway to go forward. Uh, and, and a lot of times you can look at the, the bigger guys out there to learn what, what, where you want to go. Right. Um, there's, there's a lot of work in the HR world about organizational development models and um, there's one that really resonates with me in, the, in Burson uh, that uh, basically kind of takes the maturity of the company and puts it on levels and uh, I see a lot of work that we're going to be doing to move ourselves up that ladder toward having a, a more talent mature company uh, and, and that coming, kind of coming through creating good systems where regions talk to each other and, and we're onboarding and, and acquiring talent uh, that, that matches our culture. We're, we're setting up an environment where we're attracting people that want to subscribe to the way we do clinical care and then um, helping individuals once they're here take that next step on their career, whether it's forward in management or, or sideways uh, or maybe backwards sometimes. You know, people have life changes, families, uh, other, other uh, moving uh, things that can happen to you. Um, but just trying to basically hold a space that, that is a robust and dynamic environment so that we can be pushing toward this, um, I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Well, and you know, Derek, I'm so impressed by that. I love hearing you talk about those, the, the people initiatives and the, the fact that we are systematically thinking about how we're going to, how do we develop the organization along these evidence-based, really, mm -hmm. strategies that demonstrate this is kind of, so we think about it on the clinical side, but on the organization side, and how do you put together an organization and build an organizational culture that's going to be successful organizationally as well. So I just think that is so, and so exciting, and it's that unparalleled piece. Mm. You know, I've been in healthcare a long time, and I've never worked for an organization that takes as seriously this whole idea around how do we build support our people and build culture as yeah. Infinity does. It's really exciting. Yeah, thanks for that feedback. The the developing cl clinical capability is one, and, and the other two that we really think we're going to focus on in 2017, delivery management results, demonstrating leadership behavior. Every employee, every clinician in the company does those three things in different ways. Um, if you've got a, a clinical title, you, you've got a clinical uh, say in what's going on, whether you're a frontline clinician with your hands on patients or an area director that, that is influencing care, you still have that, you're, you're born and bred, kind of trained in that clinical mentality, um, but there's the management results. You have to, you, once you know what the good clinical outcomes, the good patient interventions are, you have to deliver them and you have to tweak them so that you're getting the outcomes. Uh, so management in, in the way I see it is not just about an org chart and not just about a title, it's about whatever environment you're in as an employee, um, you're a manager to your patient if you're not a manager to an apartment. And the leadership piece is, is going to be a huge focus in 2017. Uh, we're doing a symposium presentation, talk about uh, leadership for the frontline clinician. Uh, it's, it's consistent with what the three major professional associations are saying louder and louder that every clinician is a leader. Um, you know, healthcare is in this time of change and, and, uh, and, and going toward unparalleled quality. Um, that, that whole revolution, all of it is, is basically just leadership. You're using different words right. to, to be a leader. And so we, through the academy, the leadership academy that we've had for the past two years, um, we're going into the third year next year. We're hopeful to take it from that kind of close cohort and really get it into the DNA, uh, into the employee experience at the frontline level. Uh, it's, it's really exciting. Yeah, and I love how these things are all so parallel to one another because, you know, in order for clinicians to kind of change the way they manage patients, to grow in, in clinically and to feel good about yeah. new methods of care delivery, they have to feel really solid as individuals. Yeah. And they have to feel confident in the, in the environment. And all of these things that you're describing about conveying to our people about, you know, kind of 
the attributes of our frontline staff is really exactly what's going to be needed in order for them to do clinically right. what we need them to do. It's not going to be just about what their skills are, but right. also there's a bit of an attitude about it and yeah. you want to feel confident and secure with changing your practice yeah. behavior. So yeah. I'm really, I don't think we could do one without the other, so I'm either. really excited about the combination of things that we're working on. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the multiple uh, efforts in, in the, you know, quality outcomes, leadership development, people initiatives, even compliance, recruiting, Absolutely. all of them, um, the, it's been building year yeah. after year after year, and it, it feels like 2017 is, is yeah. ripe for just, just going big. Yes, I think it's right. going to be really great. That's great, Derek. This has been fun. Yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>